Hello, hope you're all doing very well. Today's video is going to be an edit of one of my photographs that I shared in last week's episode of In Search of Trees. So I'll take you through my Lightroom and photo, uh, Photoshop steps. I uh, hope you enjoy. Cheers. Guys, okay, so we're in Lightroom now and we've got four scans here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just do a photo merge panorama. That'll bring up your preview. I usually just leave it in spherical. That tends to give me a good result. Now I'll put auto crop on, click merge, that'll go to the tasks, and then we'll see the raw file that it spits out. And there we go. So here's our raw file. And now this is kind of my workflow. Um, I found this works best with black and white images, uh, black and white film, and I'll go to the develop module, D on the keyboard. And the first thing I'll do is I'll take the eyedropper and I'm actually gonna click off the side uh, and pick a, a white balance and then I usually then convert it to black and white with V and the first thing I'll do is look at the tone curve on the right hand side and essentially you're going to flip it go from a negative to a positive and that gives you a, a very basic unedited uh, positive image. Now, obviously I knew there was this light leak on the side, so before I edit any of the tones, uh, essentially what we're seeing here is that spike down in the whites. Obviously this is normally blacks, but we're looking at uh, the inversion because it's reading a negative. Uh, so this is the whites in this case, and that's coming from this uh, on the left hand side here. So what I need to do is do a crop and now I'm going to put it in 4x5 and crop in to where I'm happy. Um, about there. Now this side I'm going to have to come in quite a bit. Really include a bit more sky just to make it even on the top there and on the side there. Right. Now when we look at the tone curve, that little bit of clipping on the whites is gone, which means that we can uh, play with this tone curve a bit more, uh, fine tune our adjustments a bit better. So what I like to do is give a bit more of an S curve and that's going to give some natural fall off to the highlights and shadows. So before, after, just a bit more contrast in the image in total. Um, I tend not to edit too much in that basic panel when I'm working with film, but with this image, I definitely want to uh, darken it, da darken down those shadows a bit, especially in the foreground, because I really want to focus on that light coming through, sort of almost out of out of frame there. Um, so the shadows really need to go down. Now that's going to be the highlights, since we're working with the negative, and then I'll bring the the highlights up a bit, just to emphasize that. And one thing I did forget to do actually is uh, down here I'm going to turn all the sharpening off and I'm going to enable my profile corrections so that it is really uh, getting rid of any distortion that might have been in the image. Um, and then for this particular image, the sky is a little bit distracting. Um, 
there's no detail there really. It was a blue sky in the morning. So I'm going to add um, a bit of a vignette just to focus the viewer's eye on the center of the image there. I'll probably go about, uh, let's see, 12. Yeah, 12 is not too intense, but it's also not too distracting. Oh, uh, you know what? We'll pull it back a bit. We'll go 10. Um, and then I'll probably add just a bit of clarity to uh, really bring out all the detail in this image. Now, those are just some pretty basic adjustments. I could probably play with contrast a bit more, etc. Um, but the majority of the sort of selective edits are going to be made in Photoshop. So let's take it over into Photoshop and I'll show you what I do there. Just to say sorry if you can hear my uh, computer running. It's a little bit of an old older model and it's uh, certainly feeling it when opening up a sort of 300 megabyte file. <laughs> so uh, I've got it open now in Photoshop. I find it much easier to come in and get rid of any dust. Um, in my Photography Lumenzia uh, workspace. So I've got this Lumenzia uh, luminosity masking panel open. Um, and one of the things that I like to do right at the beginning is just check dust. And we can see there's a few spots in the sky. So I'll go out of that and uh, we'll come in, get really close up, and just work some of this dust out of the image. Now, you don't need to see me do all of this, so I will fast forward when that's all done. Well, that wasn't too bad, um, certainly had worse. So let's just have a little look at the image and think about what we're trying to achieve here. And then work with the tools that luminosity masking gives us to better achieve that vision. So for me, this shot was all about this convergence of diagonal lines and we've got the light coming perpendicular to the farm road and the sort of single point perspective of these diminishing trees uh, going into the same direction as the farm road. So what I really want to emphasize is that that light coming across the scene and the shadows that the trees then make as they're backlit by the rising sun. Um, so for instance, for me personally, this area in the front left is too bright. So I'm going to do a bit of dodging and burning uh, to work up uh, some of these brighter areas and darken down some of the shadows. So I'll start with shadows and then uh, we can assess the highlights from there. So I'll just see what, uh, what masks look good. So I'm probably going to go with the B mask here, um, but I will just load, it, load up a dodge and burn layer and then use the B mask as a selection. Now I have black paint, 1% flow, and a relatively big brush. I'll move in here 
and just slowly start to paint in this area. So if we look at before and after, that's already extremely effective. Um, could probably do with a little bit more just in the foreground here as well. Now I'm going to continue doing that with some of these shadows in the mid in the midground. A bit smaller of a brush. I'm not too worried about painting into the highlights here because I have that uh, luminosity mask loaded as a selection, so I can be pretty uh, rough and ready about it. I'll just bring my brush size up a bit. Now I'm not painting too much into these deeper shadows, um, just to preserve as much shadow detail as possible. Um, bit in here. So here, let's have a look again, before and after. It's already creating that effect that we want with those, that stream of light coming through. Um, so I'll make a, a, another dodge and burn. Now, uh, darken, lighten. <clears throat> so this time, uh, I'm going to load up maybe an L2. Not quite. Let's see what D gives me. C. C is a much better, better selection of the light coming through. Select that. I load it as a selection. Swap my paint to white. And now I have to be quite careful because highlights tend to go pretty bright pretty quick. Um, so I'm just going to do a few strokes. Get a bigger brush for this area. And then work in a bit more off to the side. So you get a sense of the the light source. So that's really helped already. Um, you can see before and after how much more direct uh, that is. Now I'll pr I would probably also come in and do it a bit in the background here. Get some of this worked up. The, the dodging and burning is basically the majority of the editing that I do. Um, I did miss one little dust bunny there. So I'll just use the healing brush. So, uh, oops, sorry. I have to go to stamp. There we go. So I'm pretty happy with that now. Um, I would probably just deselect quick and do an overall levels adjustment. Um, I quite often I use this histogram here, just double check upload. So I can see I've got a lot of space to work with in the highlights. So in that levels adjustment, I'm going to bring that down and just see that lifts the image a whole bunch. I might even bring that grey point over a bit. No, leave it, leave it at one and just bring the blacks in a few points. So that's just overall contrast for the scene. A really easy way to make some smart selections and just focus in on what matters in your edit.
got something out of that. Now, if you like the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, then consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, there's going to be a few more studio videos in the near future, as it's a bit difficult to get out into nature and shoot in the normal locations that I would. Uh, so bear with me on that, but more videos out and about photographing coming soon. Cheers.